Hi everyone, I'm Ken, and in this video uh, we're going to be talking about how to choose your first telescope. Um, it can be kind of a daunting task because there's a lot to choose from, obviously. Um, but if you ask yourself a couple of questions at the outset, you can kind of narrow it down and uh, maybe pick the best one for your needs. Uh, there's three things to, to think about at the beginning. The price, the, the diameter, the aperture of the telescope, and then also the size, just how physically big it is. Um, in terms of price, if you're just getting into the hobby and you don't know if you're going to want to stick with it, it you may not want to break the bank and spend a lot of money. Uh, so telescopes actually start at about $50 for a basic one and go up to maybe a couple hundred dollars here. Uh, and you can see surprisingly a lot of detail for not that much money. Um, aperture, the bigger the diameter, the more light it lets in. The more light it lets in, the more things you can see, the fainter the object you can see. So a small telescope is great for the big bright objects, the moon and planets. Um, a very large telescope here can get you into really faint nebulae and galaxies. And then finally, the size of the thing. It's got to be manageable for you. Um, if the telescope is too big for you to carry outside, then what good is it? It's just going to sit inside and not get any use. So make sure you get one that's uh, sized for your needs and you can put in the car or take out into the backyard. Uh, so let's talk about a couple of individual designs and uh, you can get more familiar with, uh, with each design. So like I said, there's three main types of telescopes and this is the first one, uh, the refractor. Um, it's probably the oldest design and uh, a fairly simple system. The light enters through the front, hits the lens and travels straight down the tube to the back and usually there's an elbow like this to bring it out to your eye at a comfortable angle so you're not going to strain your neck. Um, refractors start with a little 60 millimeter telescope like this, it's about $99, and they'll go up to, this is a, this is a three and a half inch telescope, or uh, 90 millimeters. They can get a little larger than this, but you don't see really big telescopes this design. Um, there's several advantages to a refractor. It's a very clean image, uh, inch per inch, compared to other telescope designs. It's nice and sharp, nice and bright. There's no alignment necessary with these lenses, it's always fixed, so maintenance is actually very low. And then if you ever wanted to point this off out into the uh, distant views out this way, you can uh, look at the hikers on the mountain, the boats on the bay. Uh, it's not just dedicated to astronomy like some telescopes. So very versatile uh, instrument of the refractor. Alright, this is the reflector design of telescopes, which uses two mirrors instead of uh, lenses, which the refractors use. Uh, in this case, the light travels down the front of the telescope, hits the primary mirror in the back, travels back up to the secondary mirror, which is up front, and it's angled at a 45 degree angle, and it sends the light out the side of the telescope to your eyepiece here. It's a very simple system, uh, a little different than the refractors. It does need to be aligned or collimated, uh, whereas you don't have to worry about that with a refractor. If you travel around with it, you put it in a car, and you, and you uh, drive around on bumpy roads, the mirrors will probably get out of alignment. So it's, uh, it is a, a design that needs to be uh, collimated, uh, so maintenance needs to be kept up with it. Um, one other trade-off, you can't use this for daytime viewing. The, the image is upside down and there's no way to correct it like in a refractor, so not so great for looking at boats on the bay, uh, but great for astronomy because mirrors are very cheap to make. Larger mirrors mean better views, so you get more bang for your buck out of the reflector design than, than any other design of telescope. All right, well, this is the third type of telescope, the Cassegrain design. Now, it's, it's kind of like a reflector. The light comes down through the front, hits the primary mirror on the back, bounces up to the secondary, which is up front again. But instead of coming out the side, the light goes all the way back down again through a hole in the primary mirror and out the back uh, to your eyepiece again with an elbow on it. The, uh, the primary advantage of a Cassegrain like this is it's very small. The, the focal length of this thing is actually longer than that first refractor I showed you. It's about 1200 millimeter focal length, but it's folded up into a very small size. So that makes this thing great for taking on an airline, traveling around when you're camping and you don't have a lot of room for, for telescope equipment. So you can get a very compact telescope uh, with good aperture uh, in the castoring design. Um, you can use this for daytime viewing as well as the night sky, so it is a little different than the reflector in that regard. It does need collimation from time to time, but these mirrors are held fairly rigidly, so usually you don't see 
the need to collimate a, a caster in. So a little bit less maintenance. One thing you do want to watch out for, there is a lens right up front. So fingerprints, just find a way of getting on that lens. Uh, so make sure you have a cloth handy to clean it off. Well, one more criteria that you might want to consider before your purchase is the way that the telescope is mounted. Uh, that can affect how easy it is uh, to use the telescope and uh, the, the tracking as well. The most basic type is a little ALTAS, or altitude azimuth system, which basically just means left and right, up and down. Very simply, plop it down on side and you're ready to go. But if you want to follow something through the sky as the Earth turns, you've got to move this manually, left and right, up and down, to follow the object. To counteract that, uh, this refractor is on an equatorial mount. There's a little more setup involved with this. You have to polar line the mount, which means getting this axis here pointing at Polaris. And then the scope doesn't move the way you think it's going to move. It doesn't move in left and right up and down motions. It moves in these arcs, east and west, north and south. So once you've found something, you lock it down and use these slow motion knobs to follow along. So as long as you're properly aligned, one twist of this knob will follow the object as it goes through the sky. A variation on the Altaz mount are the Dobsonian mounts. These are great for very big telescopes because you don't need a very big expensive equatorial mount. It's very simple to use. It's got very smooth tracking just by pushing along by hand. So a real popular way to do big reflectors is on this Dobsonian or Altaz mount. Well this is the Astroview 90mm equatorial refractor and I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it can do. It's on an equatorial mount, so you can track along the sky just by twisting the knob here. You can add a motor drive later if you wanted to follow something that you found. It's 90 millimeter diameter, which means it's a, a, a medium-sized refractor, which can see all sorts of stuff. Moon and planets, you'd be able to see the, the rings around Saturn, a uh, cloud band or two around Jupiter, um, as well as the moons around Jupiter. And then it's getting big enough to see some of the fainter objects, so some of the star clusters, um, brighter nebulae like the Orion Nebula, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy are definitely within the reach of a uh, moderately, moderately priced telescope like uh, the Astro V90 here. Well, this is the Starblast 4.5. Um, I really like this telescope a lot. It's got a lot of bang for the buck uh, because it's a reflector design. It's starting to get fairly large aperture here. Uh, we sell it a couple of different ways. Here it's on an equatorial uh, tripod mount. We also have it tabletop mounted here. If you don't have a lot of room, you want to uh, pack something away and not worry about a large tripod. Uh, but the telescope itself is the same either way. Um, four and a half inches will, will allow you to see all sorts of faint objects. Uh, the Messier objects, that's a collection of about 100, 110 of the best deep sky objects up there. Well, they're pretty much all in the range of a telescope of this size. Um, the moon, it's going to look like you're in orbit around the moon. Uh, planets, the rings of Saturn, cloud belts on Jupiter, you can see the phase of Venus with a telescope like this. So. I think you can have a lot of fun with a very moderately priced telescope like the Starblast 4.5. Alright, this is the Orion 8-inch SkyQuest Dobsonian. Uh, it's a reflector. We have models in this line starting at 4.5 inch, if you want something very small and lightweight, all the way up to very large ones, 10-inch, uh, 12, 14-inch if you want to go crazy. Those get fairly heavy. I like this one a lot because it's still pretty manageable. I can still lift it, carry it around. Yes, it is a little bigger than the last couple of telescopes that I showed you, but it makes up because the aperture is so large, you can pull in so much more detail. Um, the moon and planets, great detail, even more so than the others, but the main advantage to a reflector of this size is the, the deep sky objects. Very, very uh, high resolution, lots of light coming through, so you see not only just the Messiers, the 110 of the best and brightest, but you can get into thousands of fainter ones as well uh, with a telescope of this size. Um, this is probably the best bang for the buck of any of the telescope designs that we've got, and it's definitely my favorite. Well, this is the Orion Starseeker 130 millimeter reflector. I wanted to talk about this guy because it's a little different than the other telescopes uh, in this video in that it has a computer system on it right here. So this can be a lot of fun. Um, with the other telescopes, you find the objects yourself. You have a star chart, uh, you learn them, some of the constellations, learn how to track them down and find them, which can be half of the fun, the hunt. But if you don't want to spend a lot of time looking for the object and want to spend more time looking at the object, this is totally the answer. You punch in what you want to see in the computer here, you hit enter, and the telescope will slew 
automatically over to the object, center it, and then continue to track as the uh, object moves through the sky. It just needs a very basic uh, initial alignment uh, procedure. You put in your zip code, the time of night, and point it to a couple of stars. You don't even need to know the, na the names of the stars either. Um, it's smart enough to figure out what you're looking at. So a very fun telescope, and you won't have any problem finding any of the objects you want to see in the sky uh, with the Orion Star Seeker 130. Orion also offers a full line of uh, tabletop telescopes as well. These guys are very affordable and very portable. Um, it starts off at $49.95 for the basic little fun scope here and goes to $199.95 for the 4.5 inch star blast on the end. Now these are great grab and go telescopes. They're, uh, like I said, very portable, lightweight. You can throw them in the back of the car, go off camping, take them into the backyard and put them on, the, on your table in the backyard. Uh, so they're great for the beginner, or also for somebody who already has a large telescope uh, and doesn't feel like bringing out uh, the large 10-inch Dobsonian and wants something quick and easy. Well, a, uh, a tabletop is definitely the answer. So let's talk about each one uh, individually and see what the benefits are. This is the Funscope. It's a 76 millimeter uh, reflector on a tabletop mount. It's great for the, the first-time buyer who's not really sure uh, if they want to get into the hobby and doesn't want to spend a lot of money. It's $49.95, uh, very affordable, and it'll allow you to see um, uh, bright objects, the moon in very good detail, planets, you'll be able to see Saturn's rings, uh, the, a cloud band on Jupiter, um, the four brightest moons around Jupiter, and if you get into a little darker sky site away from city lights, you can even see some of the brighter star clusters um, and a nebula or two, something like the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy. All right, here we have two tabletop models that are both priced $99.95. Uh, so still very affordable and very portable. On the right is the GoScope 80 millimeter, and on the left is the Skyscanner 100. The, the advantage of the 80 on the right, you can also use it for some daytime viewing too. It's a refractor design. So if you wanted to go hiking and look at the uh, climbers on the mountain um, or the boats sailing by, the refractor is the way to do it. The one on the left, the 100 millimeter, the view is upside down, so it's really only for the night sky, but it's a little bit bigger aperture, 100 millimeters versus 80. So it pulls in a little bit more light and allows you to see slightly fainter objects. Both of these are now big enough to not only see the moon and planets, but to start getting into some better deep sky objects. The Meze objects, all perfect for scopes of this size. And here we have the next level in the tabletop models. The, on the left, the Starblast 4.5 inch reflector tabletop. And on the right, the Starmax 90 millimeter tabletop. They're both $199.95. They're both, they're for different uh, uses. The Starblast is a large aperture, larger aperture reflector. So it's great for the fainter objects, the, the nebulae, the galaxies. Um, and it does a very good job at that. It will also allow you to see the moon and planets. But if you want the, the, a really nice detailed view of the planets, the Starmax here on the right has a very long focal length. It's great for planetary detail. Very high contrast, uh, very sharp images. So if you're looking for a, uh, a telescope that's great for the craters on the moon and specifically detail on planetary surfaces, you can't beat the little Starmax 90. Plus it's so small and compact, it's a very simple system to carry on with you wherever you go. One feature I haven't mentioned yet um, about these tabletop telescopes, with the exception of the 4.5, which is a little too big for this, the smaller 4 telescopes can actually be used uh, on a tripod and don't need to be tabletop mounted. The smaller 4 have a quarter 20 threaded hole in the bottom, and that will attach to any standard photo tripod. Here I've got a photo tripod without the head attached, but even with a head it'll still work. So. If you're going to be going somewhere and you're worried that they may not have a table available, well, bring your tripod out and away you go. All right, well, there we have it. Um, we've got a lot of choices uh, from a very small tabletop model all the way up to uh, large Dobsonian telescopes. It's a daunting choice. I mean, there's a lot of things to choose from, but like I said at the beginning, if you just answer a couple of those questions, um, how much you want to carry around, how big it is, what you want to see, and then uh, how much you want to spend, you can quickly uh, narrow down your choices and find the, the right telescope for you. 
If you had any questions about all of this, um, you can reach us a couple different ways. Uh, on our website, we've got our email address. Uh, you can call our customer service line. Um, our customer service agents are happy to help. We have live chat on the web. Uh, also, there's a learning center on the website, and you can get a lot of questions answered there. So enjoy your telescope when you get it, and clear skies.